Today is the 30th of July, which marks exactly six months since I started my YouTube channel. So keep watching if you want to know exactly what it takes to start a YouTube channel. For the longest time, I felt like I didn't know enough to start my YouTube channel. I wasn't going to bring enough value to you guys because I wasn't ready. You will never be more ready than today. So starting your YouTube channel is a lot about sharing what you know and your experiences. And I guarantee that already today, you have something that you can teach. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I am very, oh no, okay again. <laughs> I forgot what it was to say after. One more time, go this channel, the goal of this channel is to go of this channel is to <laughs> It does take some getting used to in the beginning. I won't lie to you. I used to try and cut every frame of my face that I did not like. You eventually get used to the fact that you look different from different angles. You try and focus more on the information that you're delivering rather than the way you look on camera. It is only through practice that you can get there. So I invite you to sit down and film a video despite what you think you're gonna look like or sound like. In my case, I was actually extremely lucky because my boyfriend has his own YouTube channel. That was probably one thing that pushed my YouTube channel way forward compared to if I was to do this completely on my own. So if you know someone that already has a YouTube channel, I invite you to talk to them, maybe see if they're willing to help you because it can be very overwhelming in the beginning. And one thing, you don't have to have everything ready right off the start. Create your account so that you can post your first video. For example, for me, I only created my banner about two months into starting my YouTube and for my logo it actually took absolutely no time i used canva so i created that right away within the first couple of weeks of starting my youtube channel the hardest part is actually publishing and making your first video and thumbnail so there's a lot associated to making a youtube video so there's a lot of planning before you even start filming. Um, there's the filming parts in terms of lighting and how you talk to the camera, camera presence and all of that. There's the editing piece. You need to learn how to cut your video, how to transition, how to insert A and B rows, something that I had no clue what it meant when I started. So A rows is usually for example, this right now where I'm talking to you, that's an A row. And then there's B rows, which are just sort of short little clips that you film to kind of break the A rows and to maybe show what you're talking about. For example, this is a B row where I am going to insert a clip of me editing my video. So this is the first time that I am talking about my journey on YouTube and I wanted to know if this is a topic that interests you guys. So let me know down below in the comment section if you would like to see more content like this one. So you could start working on videos and sort of get maybe one, two, three videos done and ready and then publish your first video. That way you can kind of keep up and start being consistent right away with your YouTube, uh, rather than being very stressed and trying to figure out how to make your next video. In this stage, one thing that really helped me is listening to tutorials on YouTube. So YouTube is a huge platform and there's so much good information out there. So I would invite you to look for channels that will teach you how to make a video. And there are so many of these. So in my case, this process was definitely sped up because I had my boyfriend, Tim, who helped me a lot. For example, the first video he edited fully for me. Second video, he also edited for me. 
but this time I was paying more attention since I had seen it once already. I was able to follow better and kind of try and recall where to go and what to do. Um, and then the third video, I actually edited myself with his help. My fourth video is actually the one that I was able to edit on my own. It still took me a really, really long time to do. From there on, I really put an emphasis on listening to tutorials and just improving my editing skills. For thumbnails, it actually took me way longer to get comfortable with Photoshop. I had never used Photoshop before and it could really be overwhelming at first, but by maybe my eighth or 10th thumbnail, I was starting to get a little bit more comfortable. And that is when I started to really kind of plan my thumbnail first before filming my video. The process will later on take you a lot less time. It's just that this phase, making your first couple of videos, is really the kind of hardest part that I found. So just right off to start, you have to understand that it's not going to be perfect. And neither is going to be your second, third, fourth, etc. So YouTube is a learning process. So your videos are going to get better over time. But in order for that to happen, you need to produce videos from start to end. That is the most important thing that I have seen that helps you learn. For example, some of the things that I still need to kind of improve on is the pacing of my video, the planning of my video, the cinematography of my video. So those are kind of things that I will be working on in the future, but I am definitely a lot more comfortable being on camera. I have accepted the way I sound and the way I look on camera and I, I feel uh, that I can kind of separate that from the creativity of my videos. So in the beginning, don't get too caught up in the planning stage of your video. I think one thing that's a lot more important is just to take action. You can't plan something when you don't have the experience. The more you practice, the more you're going to know one, what kind of shots you like, what you should say, how things sound on camera, what things resonated with your audience. When you're starting your YouTube channel, you need to understand that the results that you're going to get are not necessarily proportionate to the effort that you're putting in. It's going to take a lot of effort and you're going to see probably little results in the beginning. Unless you're the exception, I know that there are certain channels that blow up overnight, but a lot of them I feel like they already have the knowledge and there is a skill set that they already have, which is why they're doing so well. But for me, I was new to this and I wasn't expecting to be one of those channels that blew up overnight. And I think that's a healthy way of looking at it. So when you're starting, give yourself time. Give yourself time to learn, to improve, to get better, to figure things out. Think of it as a creative outlet and don't put too much pressure on yourself to get monetized or to make money off of it because that might even take out the pleasure of making videos. What I've found helpful uh, to focus on rather than results is the things that you can control and that's going to just make you a lot happier over time. So you can never predict how well a video is going to be. Uh, when it's going to get picked up by the algorithm, but you can predict how many videos you're able to do per week. Or if you want to improve a certain skill set, you could watch a number of tutorials and work on that. Then you're going to be um, more satisfied at the end of the month when you have achieved those goals. If this video has been helpful to you thus far, I will invite you to boop the like button so that it can spread to more people. Thank you. I had my first video be picked up by the algorithm about three months after being posted. And what that means is that the algorithm was promoting my video on people's homepage, which meant that they were more likely to click on it. 
and because of that I actually received a lot of views um, and I also received a lot of followers from that however when a video is picked up by the algorithm it usually burns out and once it burned out the number of views on my channel really decreased another thing that i noticed is that i also have a few videos that did really well in the search i think when it comes to search it's very important that the niche that you're targeting so for example um one of my videos that did really well is the review of a suitcase by monos and I think that this kind of niche is just a little bit less saturated than the fitness industry and which is why my video is able to kind of rank better. When it comes to views that you get from the search function, it is actually a little bit more consistent. So to this day, I'm still getting a very good amount of search uh, views for this video and I will see a spike let's say when the, the brand is doing a promotion or they have a sale and then it will kind of dip down and then go back up so but overall I've definitely been having a very consistent amount of views from this video. I think that one thing that you would also want to figure out for yourself is whether you actually enjoy the process of making a video. For me I actually enjoy the process of creating a video so much once i have my footage filmed i am so excited to sit down cut it up and get kind of like a rough edit of my video and then kind of go through it and edit it more so that it is more interesting and that it has a little bit of a better pacing for you guys so that for me is just a way to be creative, a way to learn, and a way to make something of my own. So if you don't feel that way about making a video, you might not want to do this long term. I did try reels on my channel and I would honestly, as a new YouTube channel, I would actually encourage you to experiment with reels just because you're going to get a lot more views, which is going to lead to a lot more followers. The watch hours from your reels, however, they get banked separately from your full video watch hours. And it's also a good way to kind of make you feel a little bit better about your YouTube channel and those days where you're really getting very little views. I believe back in February is when my channel was just not getting any views whatsoever. I felt like I wasn't talking to anyone. I was just making all these videos for nothing um, and just kind of uh, posting a few reels did help me get a few followers, get a few comments, get people actually watching my videos which then really motivated me a lot more because then I felt even though I had a very small audience that I was at least talking to someone when I was making my video. Now, in terms of monetization, you're probably wondering, am I making money off of my YouTube? Have I been monetized so far? And the answer is no. So it takes 8,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours in order to get monetized on YouTube. And if you take a look at my channel, I currently have 877 subscribers, so I still need 123 more. And in terms of watch hours, I currently have 2,378 watch hours, so I am just a little bit over halfway uh, to monetization. I hope that this video has been helpful to you. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comment section. As always, I'll see you in the next video.